More recently, the idea of central traits has been supplanted by the more general concept of schemas. While there are some important caveats to how schemas about social categories are used to form impressions depending on the target, there's good evidence that schemas are centrally involved in the impression formation process. So what are schemas? Schemas are cognitive structures that represent our knowledge about a concept or type of stimulus. They're formed on the basis of past experience. They're like our theories for why things are the way they are. They allow us to encode, store and retrieve information about things. We can have schemas about a range of targets such as events, people and even ourselves. Event schemas, sometimes called scripts, are our generalised representations of activities and events. They are associated with a particular situation. They basically tell us what to expect in a situation. So for example, if you go out to dinner at a fancy restaurant, you know that somebody will come to the table to ask you for your order before food is brought out from the kitchen. Role schemas, sometimes confusingly also called scripts, are the roles or parts that people are expected to play in a particular setting. Role schemas generally make sense in terms of event schemas. You have roles within events. For example, the role of the chef at the restaurant is to make the meal that you order from the menu. You'd be a little surprised if the chef was playing the piano and another diner was in the kitchen cooking your dinner. Person schemas represent our individualised knowledge structures about specific types and groups of people, as well as individuals. When we refer to a stereotype, we're talking about a person schema associated with a social category. This could be ethnicity, gender or even religion. The attributes that we believe are associated with these social categories are called stereotypes. Lipman called these pictures in our head. An implicit personality theory is a person schema about a particular type of person. These represent what we believe to be the characteristics that go together to form certain types of personality. For example, imagine that Ruby is the last guest at the party. She's being loud and dancing on the coffee table and generally having a great time. If I asked you whether Ruby was an introvert or an extrovert, I'm guessing that most of you would say extrovert because your implicit personality theory for extroverts more closely matches Ruby's behaviour. We also have schemas about specific people. For example, your best friend or parent. And perhaps not surprisingly, we have schemas about ourselves. These are called self-schemas. We generally manage information about ourselves in the same way that we manage information about other people. The difference is that our self-schemas tend to be more complex and include information about what we'd like to become in the future. OK, now that you know about the different types of schemas, let's see how well you can identify them. You're about to see an interaction between two people. Your job is to work out what type of schema is not being followed. Oh, hey, how are you going? Oh, hi. Um, actually, not really well. I've got this uh, sore foot. I was walking the dog on the weekend and I stepped on a really sharp rug and it really hurts. And then I banged my elbow when I got back home and I managed to break my watch at the same time. And I guess I'm just a bit clumsy. I, I really like that watch. Did I mention I'm getting a bit of a runny nose? It's, 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 well, I don't have any tissues and it's getting to be a bit of a problem.